By now you're thinking, hey, I thought this was muscle car of the week. What are you doing standing by an old 50s work truck? Well, this one has a big secret. When people think about cars from 1957, today, almost you know, 56 years after the fact, it seems like the 57 Chevy is the most popular topic. But if you look at what Ford went through for 57, it's really unbelievable to see that everything for Ford was new in 1957. They had a whole new lineup of cars. The only car that didn't change in 57 as a completely new platform was the Thunderbird. All the rest of them did. Ford had 21 brand new models for 1957. That's the first time in history a car company ever made that many different new cars in a year, and it hasn't happened since. So you can imagine the uh, undertaking it took Ford to retool and redesign their entire product line for 57. The differences were the cars got longer, they got lower, they got all new engines, it was the silver anniversary of Ford's V8, so they were really going all in to make the 57 model year special. And the motivation was because uh, Ford had been battling with Chevrolet not only in sales, uh, they were kind of behind Chevy in the 50s in sales, but also in racing. Uh, NASCAR was really, really popular in the mid-50s, and in the previous years, the manufacturer's championships went to companies like Hudson and Oldsmobile, and Ford knew that in 1957, Chevrolet was coming out with their Rochester fuel injection, which meant the 283 and the Chevrolet NASCARs was really going to be a screamer. So Ford had to do something, right? So to compete with that fuel-injected 283, Ford looked at the NASCAR rule book and they found out that you could do a bunch of new things in NASCAR in 57. Fuel injection, dual carburetors, or a supercharger. So Ford took their hottest engine, which was the 312 cubic inch Thunderbird Special V8, reduced the compression ratio just a little bit, and enlisted the help of Paxton McCulloch superchargers to put a supercharger on the 312. And what you ended up with was a real rocket ship. This engine didn't come standard in any Ford car, but it was available in all of them. And to be legal to run a NASCAR, Ford had to produce at least 50 versions for the street. So the Thunderbird Special supercharged engine could be ordered in a two-door sedan, a four-door, of course the Thunderbird, or the brand new for 57 Ford Ranchero. Now there's probably a reason why you've never seen one of these driving around. It's because Ford only built two of them, and this is one of the originals. In the 50s, the Ford guys figured out that by adding different body styles and some functionality, they could reach entirely new markets just by making subtle mods to the cars they already built. And this starts off basically as a fair lane that they added the small pickup truck bed to, and it will now carry more than a station wagon, becoming more useful. Now this particular car is unique for a couple reasons. If you look at it, it's got lots of bright work, it's got Kelsey Hayes wire wheels, it's got a two-tone interior, so it looks to be kind of a luxury addition of the working man's truck. But the real secret, and the reason why it's on Muscle Car of the Week, is under there. Two people elected to buy a 1957 Ford Ranchero with the factory supercharged V8. And this one is here in the Brothers Collection. When Ford advertised the Ranchero, they called it more than a car and more than a truck. And it's kind of interesting to note that the 57 Ranchero actually had a heavier payload capacity by 50 pounds than the Ford F-150 pickup truck. So it was an actual useful utility vehicle, but it coupled the comfort and the luxury of a Ford sedan when you weren't using it as a truck. Whoever ordered these two versions with the superchargers, you know, it, we can only imagine what they were going to use them for. Personally, I think they might have been used to run moonshine or something like that, because this certainly wasn't going to be a farm truck. The supercharged 312 cubic inch Thunderbird Special V8 was rated at 300 horsepower and 327 foot-pounds of torque. So that was more than enough to carry anything around. So the way this operated is you've got your air filter in this box here and your centrifugal supercharger down here, which is run off a couple of belts. 
And as this spun, it pulled air in through the supercharger and pushed it down into this hat, forcing air into the carburetor. Uh, there's a couple oil lines on the supercharger that come off the side of the block to keep this thing happy. But it's a pretty simple deal, and it worked really well. Uh, the race versions in NASCAR were rated at 345 horsepower, although the people at McCulloch Superchargers claimed that it was actually closer to 360. So if you're starting to get the idea that this is actually a supercharged Thunderbird stuffed into a little pickup truck body, well, you're on the right track. And that T-Bird theme continues inside. Uh, the Thunderbird logo is on the floor mats. They've added some high-performance gauges to monitor everything. And this one even has a three-speed manual on the column. So whoever ordered this car was really planning on doing some hauling and not just the kind with the bed. So did all of Ford's efforts pay off? Did all the new cars and all of the fancy stuff for racing, you know, was it worth their while? And it turned out to be, yes, it was. Ford outsold Chevrolet in 1957. Uh, 1 1.6 million and change cars for Ford, 1.5 million and change for Chevrolet. Uh, Ford won the Manufacturer's Cup in 1957. Uh, I think they won 26 races in NASCAR. They beat Chevrolet up and down. Chevrolet had a, a saying with the 283 fuel injection cars that said it made one horsepower per cubic inch. 283 cubic inches, 283 horsepower. And Ford had this Y-block supercharger that went way past that in NASCAR. So it was a very exciting time for Ford and uh, still more interesting to see that two of these escaped the factory with the supercharger. Of course, the big question is, where is the other 1957 Ford Supercharged Ranchero? Well, the answer, that's in the Brothers Collection too. It's just in a different building. You'll find more pictures of this ultra rare 50 style muscle car on our musclecaroftheweek.com website. And we've got a Facebook page where you can tune in and see what's gonna happen next week on this show. And our YouTube channel lets you subscribe so you never miss a Muscle Car of the Week video.